for Anatoly France. Even virtues like openness to life, the capacity to find and enjoy beauty in the most trivial and insignificant places, begin to show a questionable aspect. Once in the age of overflowing subjective abundance, aesthetic indifference to the choice of object, together with the power to derive meaning from all experience, expressed a relatedness to the objective world, which even in its fragments confronted the subject, antagonistically, it is true, yet immediately and significantly. In a phase when the subject is capitulating before the alienated predominance of things, his readiness to discover value or beauty everywhere shows the resignation both of his critical faculties and of the interpreting imagination inseparable from them. Those who find everything beautiful are now in danger of finding nothing beautiful. The universality of beauty can communicate itself to the subject in no other way than an obsession with the particular. No gaze attains beauty that is not accompanied by indifference, indeed almost by contempt, for all that lies outside the object contemplated. And it is only infatuation, the unjust disregard for the claims of every existing thing, that does justice to what exists. Insofar as the existent is accepted, and its one-sidedness for what it is, its one-sidedness is comprehended as its being and reconciled. The eyes that lose themselves to the one and only beauty are Sabbath eyes. They say in their object something of the calm of its day of creation. But if one-sidedness is cancelled by the introduction from outside of awareness of universality, if the particular is startled from its rapture, interchanged and weighed up, the just overall view makes its own the universal injustice that lies in exchangeability and substitution. Such justice executes the sentence passed by myth on creation. Doubtless, no thought is dispensed from such associations. None may be permanently blinkered. But everything depends on the manner of transition. Perdition comes from thought as violence, as a shortcut that breaches the impenetrable to attain the universal which has content in impenetrability alone, not in abstracted correspondences between different objects. One might almost say that truth itself depends on the tempo, the patience, and perseverance of lingering with the particular. What passes beyond it without having first entirely lost itself, what proceeds to judge without having first been guilty of the injustice of contemplation, loses itself at last in emptiness." Liberality that accords men their rights indiscriminately terminates in annihilation, as does the will of the majority that ill uses a minority, and so makes mockery of democracy while acting in accordance with its principles. Indiscriminate kindness towards all carries the constant thread of indifference and remoteness to each. Attitudes communicated in their turn to the whole. Injustice is the medium of true justice. Unrestricted benevolence becomes affirmation of all the bad that exists, in that it minimizes its difference from the traces of good and levels it to that generality which prompts the hopeless conclusion of bourgeois Mephistophelian wisdom, that all that sees the light of day deserves to go the selfsame way. The salving of beauty, even in the insipid and indifferent, appears all the more noble than obstinate persistence in criticizing and specifying, because it shows itself in fact more compliant to the orders of life. Such argument is countered by pointing to the holiness of life that shines forth precisely in what is ugliest and most distorted. However, this light does not come to us directly, but only refracted. Something that must be thought beautiful solely because it exists is for that very reason ugly. The concept of life in its abstraction that is resorted to here is inseparable from what is repressive and ruthless, truly deadly and destructive. The cult of life for its own sake always boiled down to the cult of these powers. Things commonly called expressions of life, from burgeoning fertility and the boisterous activity of children to the industry of those who achieve something worthwhile, and the impulsiveness of woman who is idolized because appetite shows in her so unalloyed, all this, understood absolutely, takes away the light from the other possibility in blind self-assertion. Exuberant health is always, as such, sickness also. Its antidote is a sickness aware of what it is, a curbing of life itself. Beauty is such a curative sickness. It arrests life and therefore its decay.
If, however, sickness is rejected for the sake of life, then hypostasized life and its blind separation from its other moment becomes the latter destructiveness and evil, insolence and braggadocio. To hate destructiveness, one must hate life as well. Only death is an image of undistorted life. Anatoly France, in his enlightened way, was well aware of this contradiction. No, says none other than the mild M. Bergeret, I would rather think that organic life is an illness peculiar to our unlovely planet. It would be intolerable to believe that throughout the infinite universe there was nothing but eating and being eaten. The nihilistic revulsion in his words is not merely the psychological, but the objective condition of humanism as utopia.